Like most parents, Joanne Panicia and her husband often worried about their child's safety and went out of their way to try and keep an eye on their three-year-old son, Paul. But on August 31st, 1992, at their home in Brookfield, Connecticut, Joanne discovered that kids can disappear before you even know they're in trouble. We're having a great day. Paul was on his good side. I went shopping alone with him, which I don't do seldom. You know, you hear all the time on TV about um, mothers going in the mall with their kids and turn around shopping and the kids gone from the carriage and he's so friendly. See, that's, that's the scary part, that he will go. He will go with anybody. Okay, come. We don't live in an area that really I should be that concerned about it, but you never know. It was a hot day. I started putting some frozen foods away. Mm -hmm. Can we have ice cream? Do you eat? You can. Okay. Okay. I was talking to Paul, but then all of a sudden I didn't hear a sound. Paul? 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 Paulie? Paul, where are you? I went out to the back because that's where we keep pulling into these toys. His toys were there, everything was there, but he wasn't there. Paul? Paul Anthony, where are you? My heart started beating faster and faster. When I heard complete quiet, that, that's, that was scary. I didn't know Paul was gone. Paul? Paul? Paul Anthony, where are you? I'm hiding. Oh, I heard where are you hiding? a muffled voice coming from the car, but I had known I liked the car, too. Paul, are you in here? You're in here? It's no big deal, but with Paul, you have to expect okay. the worst. Mommy will go get the keys. I got the keys in here. You have the keys? I, I panicked. I knew I didn't have a second set of keys. And I didn't think he would have that much air. And it was, it, it scared me. It, it really did. Brookville emergency. Yes, hi. Uh, I'm calling for 15. Drive. Yes. My son left himself in the trunk of the car. How old is your son? Three. Three years old? Three. Three? Yes. Okay, we'll have the uh, three search back there. Three. 307, 302. 106, yep. Yeah. Pine Drive. A three year old locked himself in the trunk of the vehicle. With the keys. With the keys. <laughs> Roger, I'll be en route. Brookfield Police Sergeant Charles Coleman was on routine patrol less than a mile from the house. Normally we would tell somebody that locked their keys in their trunk, forget it, we can't do it. But when we got a call of a, a child locked in a trunk, um, yeah, we'll respond to that. I was really impressed because they responded uh, really fast to my call. Okay. Okay, his name is Paul. Um, I hung up the phone and I heard the sirens going. Paul, I'm Sergeant Coleman from the police department, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, can you breathe all right? Yeah. All right, you just sit tight and keep talking to your mom. We'll get you out in a minute, all right? Okay, Paul, that was the policeman. He's going to get you out. First, I was mad at Paul, right, but when he mom. said that he had to keep, that's breathing? when I really felt panicky. I mean, all my anger towards him went away. I just felt for this little kid locked in his trunk. Mom, how long have you been in the trunk? About five minutes. All right, nothing to worry about. Oh, wait till you see this policeman has a gun. Isn't that neat? You must arrest me, aren't you? Within four minutes of the call, rescue units with the Brookfield Volunteer Fire Department arrived, led by Fire Marshal Wayne Gravius. I figured he'd be screaming or yelling or, you know, crying for his mother. But he wasn't. In about five minutes, this is his mom here. The mother was fairly calm. She uh, she was just talking to him. They were just like, you know, it was like he was right there, really. The difference was he was in the trunk. So all I want you to do is keep talking to your mom, okay? I just told him that, you know, she was going to talk to him through the whole thing. We might have to bang the car a couple of times. Right, Matt, why don't you just take a quick punch break out the back window, all right? Mia, why don't you step back? Everyone clear? Yep. Can you hear me, Paul? We're going to come in here and get you now, okay? Paul, well, we're going to have you out in just a second. 
obviously I knew he was breathing, he had plenty of oxygen, and so we uh, decided that we'd take out the back seat rather than destroy the trunk. Oh, we'll have you out in just a second, all right? Paul, you should be okay, all right? Okay, Paul, Paul. man's gonna put his hand in there. Paul, the fireman's gonna put his hand underneath the seat. Give him the keys to the car. Nothing yet, Wayne. Nothing wrong? No. Come on, Paul, give him the keys. I'm not gonna give you the keys. And I figured he'd be trying to come out the back seat where we were, and he's just like fighting us. Like, you know, I don't want to, you know, I'm not giving you the keys to the car. Come on, Paul, his hand's right there. You just got to hand him the keys so we can get you out. I'll only give the keys to my mommy. Paul, I'll give him the key. Give me the keys, Paul. Come on, Paul. I got the keys. That's a good boy, Paul. All right, man. Oh, Paul. Come on out of there. Yeah, Quentin was just amazed. Do you know? You scared me half to death. He just loved to yes, see all the attention. And it goes, woo! Oh, why don't you go in there? And there was five lights. Five cars with the lights. Oh, you need to see them lights go. Why did you go in the trunk, Paul? Because King Kong told me to in there. King Kong told him to die. <laughs> Kong. You're lucky. We tried to impress upon Paul that this could have been a dangerous situation and advised him, look, Paul, you have no business with your mom's keys. You're not old enough to drive. You're going to be in trouble for breaking my daddy's window. <laughs> yeah. I don't think your dad's going to mind as long as you're okay, all right? He knew he had done something wrong. And he just said, you know, Daddy, you know, I'm sorry they broke your window. And don't be mad when you come home. And when I came home, he came running out, and he pointed, you know, down at the, gla at the glass broken in the driveway. He goes, Daddy, I did not do it. <laughs> We like to uh, raise manly men in this family, not really intimidated by machinery, cars, motorcycle, tractor. He might have taken it a little too far, you know, got the keys and he figured I'm not afraid of anything and I'm off. The men are the fault for this. Um, my father has a tendency to hand him the keys of the Cadillac. So my next fear after the Nissan was, man, what about if he tries to go into Cadillac? Because that's a nice, comfortable trunk. Mom, 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 it's going. It's going. I'm never going to go talking, never, never more, never. Okay, I'm done talking now. Paul Anthony is the kind of kid that every mother wants to have, but when she has them, she wishes she didn't have them. <laughs> Everybody, Say, I love you. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> I love you.